hello students uh, uh, welcome uh, so uh, in today's class we are going to learn uh, one interesting topic that's come under post modern post modern literature that is post modernism uh, in our previous class we discussed about uh, uh, that is a post -modern, about the post modernism and post modern literature we also discuss about the differences between modernism uh, and post modernism how new concept and new approaches uh, advanced in the field of english literature we discuss very history of english literature as well uh, so when uh, literature period starts from old age uh, and coming into the post modernism so new variety of ideas and concept uh, has been uh, evolved has been developed uh, so big best one it uh, we will discuss about uh, today's class that is post modern literature uh, that is a uh, it is a no doubt that uh, you have already understood the concept of post modernism and post modern literature uh, now let's start what sort of characteristics fall under post modern literature uh, especially uh, that is uh, after 1945 onward uh, generally uh, that is uh, it falls uh, post modernism post modern literature a uh, new concept and new ideas a new theology have been evolved uh, in this uh, literature post modern literature uh, that is uh, one digitalized er era as well and uh, uh, there is a direct uh, contact with the technology science and technology it is uh, it has developed new concept different types of concept here. yes we say science fiction there is a meta fiction uh, that is a deconstructions uh, that is a realism and theism aestheticism and expressionism new new concept have been uh, developed uh, that is while we come into uh, this period post modern literature if we go uh, slightly if we go back into the history of english literature so now let's go to discuss about the characteristics of post modern literature uh, especially uh, in post modern literature uh, there are various ideas have been developed uh, so i have pointed out some um, major ideas yes our course has been prescribed in our book uh, we go accordingly the first one is development of english translation literature uh, development of translation literature uh, that is that is also a great phenomenon uh, to make the english uh, to bring english into uh, this form translation and literature has been indispensable literary translation is a type of translation where the source documents are fiction it helps to shape our understanding of the world around us in many ways and also understanding of history politics philosophy and so much more a literary translation has a long history. Translation has made it easy for us to get knowledge of other culture and language. In English literature also, translation has performed such a great role. Artistic translation plays an important role in our translation agency because our approach to the source information allows us to provide the best quality of the rendered poetic text. Work is done by concrete uh, algorithm. The translator reads the text uh, through uh, uh, through that is uh, then allocates individual terms divides the text into logical text and translate this section one by one uh, due to the translation of uh, that is a uh, literature from different language to english uh, it makes uh, each and every one easier to understand the text about a particular uh, country language here the down of translation literature is great while coming into the modern literature uh, translation of literature is fundamentally different from other categories uh, this is because of because the main principle of literary translation is the dominance of poetic communicative function. It means that in addition to rendering information to the reader, literary translation has also uh, that aesthetic function, the artistic image created in the particular literary work, uh, be it in the image of a characteristic or nature, will certainly have an impact on the reader. For this reason, the literary translator should take into around a specific feature of the text. It is the poetic focus of the text that makes the type of translation differs from uh, uh, that is uh, says text of an in informative type when a reading history poem or any types of literary works translation from foreign language we perceive the text itself with its meaning emotions and characters it is quite a challenging task to achieve the main goal of the translation creating a particular image for the reader and therefore a literary translation might involve some deviation from the standard rules a literary translation can reflect the depth and meaning of the literary works. A literary translator reproduce non-literal edition of the original text. So it is all about uh, how the translator perceives it. He or she writes the text from the beginning of the very end. So this applies, for example, when we obvious expression is replaced by synonymous for the structure of sentences. Uh, 
change the so then translation of literary text include uh, this uh, translation of the literary text include this idea a literary translation of books article history and other types of prose a literary translation of poetry it includes there and next one translation of advertising materials translation of other texts that require the creative and flexible approach uh, so here literary translation requires a lot of skill uh, we should not forget the translation of a book of a poem perhaps will be read by thousands of readers this means that the text need to be adequate and moreover we need to focus on the fact that translated documents should create the same image as the original perfectly executed work often makes the translator famous so here a task development of the translation one new concept in post uh, uh, that is a uh, post modern literature then we have another concept diasporic writing uh, diasporic writing that is a new concept uh, to be evolved uh, after the modernism and post modernism era so the term diasporic originally uh, used from the jewish exile from its homeland who have experience on settlement and dislocation at the political existential or metaphorical level in another word the word diasporic was derived from the greek word meaning to uh, disperse here this diasporic is the displacement of a community culture into another geographical and cultural region uh, so here diasporic the dispersion of a population from their native land particularly in voluntary mass uh, dispersion generally uh, we find two moves in diasporic writing one is temporal move and another one is special move temporal move is looking back at the past uh, that is also called uh, nlps nlcs uh, nlcs and looking forward and at the future that is also called uh, that is a uh, prolapsus uh, these are the two temporal move and special move uh, come in diasporic writing the special move involves two things uh, one is de totalization de totalization means the loss of territory and our next one is territorialization uh, terri totalization that is means uh, a restructuring of a place uh, then what are the feature of diasporic writing we will discuss about this so the feature of diasporic writing uh, diaspora from an original homeland often dramatically two or more uh, for a reason uh, they move from uh, different places alternatively or additionally the expansion from a homeland in search of work is pursuit of trade or to further colonial ambition uh, next one is a collective memory and myth about the homeland including its location history suffering and achievements in idealization of the real or imagined ancestral home and collective commitment to its maintenance restoration safety and prosperity even to its creation uh, next one is the frequent development of a return movement to the homeland and that gains collective ap approbation even in many in the group are satisfied with the with only a vicarious relationship or intermittent visits to the homeland our uh, next one is a strong ethnic group uh, consciousness sustained over a long time and uh, and best one a uh, sense of distinctiveness or common history the transmission of a common culture and religious her heritage and the belief in common faith uh, that is uh, all about the diasporic writing uh, that that is the concept developed during a uh, post modern literature then we have another concept another characteristic is cyber literature uh, cyber literature uh, that is not a very new concept for us cyber literature is related with the digital uh, digital literacy digital mark and digital born digital ideas there so cyber literature is an electronic literature generally considered to exclude print literature that has been digitalized uh, is by contrast digital born and mean to be read on a computer literature refers to written literary text distributed and read on electronic screens this electronic space provides a more flexible and convenient platform for the artist to express an aspiring in a digital age people live in a cyber space where they become part of the modern society uh, the information acquired come from old wide web uh, this is a uh, uh, www has become an important means for people around the world to spread information so cyber literature is mediated by technology of computer uh, the technology has triggered the interest of many authors to allow their motivation and creativity to make use the space that is in the internet world. Uh, so here ties the concept of cyber literature has emerged since the end of the last century, which is around the uh, 1990s. Despite the fact that the birth of cyber literature in the world of literature is respected and appreciated differently, even had had time to cause pros and cons of various circles on the one one on the one hand. There is a welcome 
it positively but not really judged negatively it was greeted to be negatively because the cyber literature is considered not to mention quality and is spontaneously folded alone it is often regarded as an uncontrolled publication of literature so there is cyber literature that is the concept developed during the uh, post modern literature uh, then uh, what are the, there are some characteristics of cyber literature cyber literature is worldwide access cyber literature is emit, has immediate update you know it has immediate update new ideas have been developed there a writer and reader may interact uh, where uh, one uh, reader can interact with the writer one audience so in readers when he reads one book from the writer then he can contact with the writer and i uh, they may have an uh, interaction and next sites become a kind of magazine blog within irregular peri uh, periodicity uh, so here sites uh, one learner can go through different sites and they can learn uh, different ideas and make an magazine and blog there uh, immediate re-edition of the content when something is missing there and immediately re-edited that so that is the characteristic of cyber literature and next one is short text are easily read on the screen uh, that is a, a long long text are not so especially uh, short text are easily read there uh, on the screen because the screen is a small one there so that's why uh, so in this way these are the main characteristics of cyber literature that is long text are not reading there uh, so then we have a uh, next uh, characteristic that is subaltern literature uh, subaltern subaltern literature that is subaltern that is subaltern shows meaning of inferior rank there is a in a society there is a higher rank and lower rank but here subaltern shows meaning of inferior rank is a term adopted by antonio gramsci to refer to those working class people in soviet union who are subject to the hegemony of the ruling class so here hegemony of the ruling class they uh, they they they, uh, they rule over that is uh, inferior rank so the concept of this literature is uh, to uh, make a subject matter of inferior rank subaltern classes may include uh, peasants uh, workers and other groups they had access to uh, hegemon that is hegemonic power in another world in post colonial theory the term subaltern described the lower social classes and the other social groups displaced to the margin of the society in an imperial colony a subaltern is a native man or woman without human agency he is defined by his or her social status that is the new uh, types of literature new concept developed during post modern literature that is subaltern literature the subaltern studies define itself as an attempt to allow the people to speak within the pages of elitist uh, historiography and in so doing uh, in so doing to speak for or not to sound the muted voice of the truly oppressed in the last two decades of the 20th century subaltern studies post colonial theory and criticism gained momentum especially as a uh, corollary to globalization in the third world countries if post colonial criticism is taken as as an offshoot of postmodernism subaltern studies drive its force from a marxism post structuralism and becomes a part of post colonial criticism here uh, so uh, that is the all idea about uh, that is the characteristic of postmodern literature uh, we are at the end of this lesson uh, student i hope you got the concept uh, if you have any confusion uh, regarding uh, this regarding the postmodernism uh, regarding the modernism and a brief history of english literature uh, you can comment on the comment section there uh, finally don't forget to like and subscribe our social learning network i hope we will get in touch in the next in our next class how to meet you there uh, see you take care good